This group of men almost pulled off one of the biggest radio scams in history, with more than $155 million stolen from over 700 Christian investors. Just how did they come together to decide to specifically target Christians, to separate them from their money? It all started when Bo Beckham met Christopher Pettingill in 2004. Each of them owned a money management firm, but decided to put their heads together and launch Oxford Private Client Group in August 2005. Pettingill invested on the side with a man named Trevor Cook and suggested in 2006 that Beckman consider investing with him as well. Cook was making his living doing forex trading. Eventually, Beckman was convinced that Cook's investment strategy could work and bought into his firm. Cook, Beckman, and Pettingill all eventually linked up with Gerald Duran, who was a longtime associate of Cook's. They created a new firm as equal partner called Oxford Global Advisor. And here's where red flag number one comes in. Back in June of 2007, Cook bought the historic and Castle Van Dusen mansion in Minneapolis. They set up shop and got to work. Beckman continued to run his money managed firm from the mansion. With Cook at the helm, the four men needed a personality, a face for the scam. They needed someone who was in the ear of the general public. They needed Patrick Kiley. Kiley hosted a radio radio program called Follow the Money that aired on more than 200 stations, including many Christian radio stations. Kylie was the perfect addition to the scheme. His older audience had plenty of money to invest, especially right after the dot-com boom. If you're not familiar, foreign currency exchange, most commonly known as Forex, is simply converting one form of currency to another. It's one of the most active marks with over $5 trillion in daily trading value. To make money, it's as simple as buying, say, the euro and hoping that it goes up in value against the dollar. This is what Trevor Cook supposedly had a talent. He created a Swiss bank account named Crown Forex LLC. He used this account to deposit investor funds to trade Forex. Those funds, however, were really for his personal use. So how on earth did a Christian radio station play into Cook and Co.'s scheme? In his late 60s, early 70s at the time, Patrick Kiley hosted Follow the Money. However, a large part of his audience tuned in via Worldwide Christian Radio, or WWCR. Raleigh would refer to his listeners as truth seekers and ask them to trust his financial expertise expertise. While Cook and everyone else siphoned the money behind the scenes, Kylie was the face of the scam. He lured investors in with his personality and booming radio voice. At the height of the scam, the 2008 recession started to hit. Financial security lingered on the back of everyone's mind. Some of the most vulnerable people were the elderly, not knowing if their retirement plans would hold up. They were willing to throw their money at Patrick Kylie, a man they trusted in both faith and finance to keep their money safe and secure. Kylie would ultimately help bring in 70% of the money stolen throughout the Ponzi scheme. Cook and his co-conspirators lived a lavish lifestyle, while the rest of the country, especially their victims, suffered from the recession. For example, Tim Cook spent his dirty money buying decorative Fabergé A, a multitude of luxury vehicles, and a collection of expensive watches. He also invested over $12 million to build a casino in Panama and paid back his own substantial gambling debts. Christopher Pettengill earned over $4.3 million working with Cook. Bo Beckman spent his millions driving luxury cars and buying vacation homes in Florida and Texas. He even made plans to become part owners of the Minnesota Wild hockey team. Patrick Kiley used money to fund his lifestyle. Cook promised investors annual returns of 10 to 12 percent on their investment. He highlighted the fact that trading would present little or no risk to the investors. Cook pretty much convinced them that it was free money. To make his money management firm look more appealing to potential investors, Cook claimed that Oxford Global Advisor had more than four billion dollars in asset under management. When investors gave Cook and his crew their money. He simply just used new money to pay off the interest to past investors. While victim A thinks they were getting the money they were promised, they were really just receiving funds scam from victims B, C, and D. However, Cook had the Swiss banking regulators breathing down his neck. To throw them off his scent, he continued pumping stolen money into his Crown Forex Swiss bank account. Of course, to keep their victims on the hook, Cook and his co-conspirator drew up false statements to convince their victims that their investments were performing as expected. Cook's scheme came undone in the summer of 2008. Investors began hearing things, especially Ken Lachlan. They heard whispers that Cook's firm was under federal investigation. They started trying to pull their money out all at once. Lachlan and another investor drove from Texas to Minnesota to get their money in person. They both left without a penny. Why? Because their money was long gone. Lawsuits piled up. Victims came forward in droves, and both the FBI and IRS had a mountain of evidence ready to charge those in 
involved with wire fraud, money laundering, and conspiracy. Federal agencies dug in when Duran and Pettingill broke off from the others to venture out on their own. Cook, in turn, renamed his business Oxford Global Partner. The confusion between Oxford Global Partners and Oxford Global Advisors only angered investors further. Nobody knew who was responsible for stealing their money as the men hid behind multiple investment firms. The doors finally blew open on Cook's Ponzi scheme, which led to all of their arrests. Cook and his partners scammed over 700 innocent victims before the scheme finally collapsed in 2009. One of the most outspoken advocates for victims was a Texas-based investor named Ken Lachlan. Lachlan, who was swindled by Kylie, exclaimed that Kylie, quote, long ago chose a life crime. Lachlan and his family were defrauded of over a million dollars. To make matters worse, Lachlan's mother also lost hundreds of thousands from the scam. This was money she had been saving since the late 70s, $250,000 of she'd received from a life insurance policy payout. Cook even scammed his own office manager, Mary Dingman. She said, quote, I did it because I thought it was safe. I lost everything. He got my 401k savings account, my house, my life insurance account. Dingman wasn't the only employee his that Cook robbed. Kyle Garman lost almost $4 million worth of investments made by him and his family. While their lives were beginning to crumble, another devious plot was unfolding in the back of Duran's mind, a plot to simply get rid of Beckman. Prosecutors introduced this plot, claiming Duran approached Pettingill and proposed they all Beckman to collect on his life insurance policy. They met up in a cafe as if they were in a Tarantino movie. Duran revealed his plan to Pettingill as they sat across from each other. Pettingill was, quote, stunned by Duran's plan to kill Beckman. It leaves us to wonder if Duran would have plotted to go after Pettingill if he knew about his cooperation authority. Lawyers speculated whether the judge would allow this Tarantino-like plot to be entered as evidence. Ultimately, the judge threw it out. Duran was never formally charged with conspiracy to commit murder or anything similar. The five men connected to the Ponzi scheme weren't all tried at the same time. Trevor Cook was the first to go down after pleading guilty in April of 2010. He admitted that between 2007 and 2009, he was the ringleader of the elaborate scheme to scam investors by convincing them to back his fake forex trading. He admitted to using the money obtained to pay off other investors while funding his lifestyle. Cook was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Christopher Pettingill was the first to turn on his partners. He pleaded guilty in 2011 to charges of fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and money laundering. Facing up to 20 years in prison, Pettingill had hoped to lessen his sentence by cooperating with authorities. He ultimately got seven years. Patrick Kiley defended his role scam by trying to play dumb. A court-ordered psychological assessment described Kylie as compliant and appeasing. The assessment also called Kylie gullible. Kylie's lawyer insisted that Kylie was nothing more than a confused old man, someone who got suckered in by Cook's charm, but prosecutor didn't buy any of it. They referred to Kylie as cunning, persuasive, and believable. It was those exact qualities that allowed Kylie himself to lure in his listeners. Kylie got a 20-year sentence. The judge's parting words to Kylie didn't have any sympathy. He said to Kylie, quote, Your age does not trump what you did here. You were the engine that kept the scheme going. Although Bo Beckman fought to defend himself, he'd end up getting the worst sentence of them all, 30 years in prison. Beckman claimed that the millions he'd made were from his own investments and that the amount stolen from investors was only $21 million, far less than what they were accused of stealing. Of course, none of that worked. Duran got 20 years in prison on 12 counts of wire and mail fraud on top of their total 97 years. The former Oxford Global Advisors were ordered to pay back $155 million in restitution to the victims of their Ponzi scheme once they get out of jail. Click to watch one of these next videos.